Hey dudes, I'm Hyla, and today on Hyla Cooking, we are making fish and chips. Super crispy, the crispiest fish and chips you will ever eat. Just like they served in ye old England, just like probably Sherlock Holmes ate, except definitely better because I'm making them and I'm making them with love, damn it. Start with the chips part, and I've got some russet potatoes here that I cut up about this size. I like them about as thick as my finger and about twice as wide, but it's a little bit, you know, it's, it's up to you. Some people like them bigger like um, steak fries, but I think that's a little too much. So they've been soaking in cold water for about 30 minutes, and now I'm just going to dry them off on a clean towel. The soak in the water helps make them really crispy because it draws out some of the excess starch on the surface. Okay, so then just sort of kind of the same trick that you use like if you're making potato latkes and stuff like that. Just wanna roll it up in a towel and give it a little squish just to get all the water off. Good deal. Okay, and we can kind of just set those aside for now and make our fish fry batter. For that, I've got some flour and some baking powder, salt and pepper. I'm gonna add a little bit of cayenne pepper, totally optional, and a little bit of dill and honestly, you don't really taste this. It just looks really pretty in the final product, but you could totally skip it. Or if you wanted to add any other spices of your choosing, that's fine. Maybe some curry powder would even be a fun little variation. And then I've just got some plain old soda water. You could use beer, um, but I'm using soda water. And this is sort of like a tempura batter and then it's just basically water and flour, and then we're gonna add in a couple of ice cubes. Some recipes you'll see add egg to the batter, but I think that that makes it a little bit chewy. I like this because it's definitely very light and crisp, and that's what I like in my fish and chips, but I guess it's a personal preference. That looks about right. And then we're just gonna add in a couple ice cubes. It's gonna help keep it cool, and we can set this aside while our oil heats up. We're waiting for our oil to heat up to 3.30, so I'll let you guys know when that happens, okay? So you just sit tight. So our oil is hot at about 3.30 and our potatoes are dry. So we can go ahead and do the first frying. And this first time, we're just trying to cook the potatoes. We're not really trying to brown them. So we're just gonna put in the potatoes and let them cook for about two minutes or until like the, all the sizzling kind of subsides a little bit. And don't overload it too much just because you don't want to drop the temperature. So maybe a handful of potatoes at a time. Not that you should use your hands to put things in boiling oil. A couple minutes later, you can see our oil for the potatoes is not quite as furiously boiling as it was when we first dropped them in. And the potatoes are soft. They're a little, getting a little brown, but this isn't the crisping step yet. So we're just going to let them drain here. And then turn the oil back up to let it get up to like 365 or so. And then we'll do the fish and the second fry of the potatoes. Oil's hot up to 365. I've got some fish that I cut up just a little bit bigger than the, the potato pieces. I'm using a barramundi, which is an Australian fish that I am new to, but somebody recommended it on Instagram. So thanks, bud. I really like it. But you can use anything. Dogfish is very traditional, but cod is also good. When I was in New Zealand, the fish shop would have like five or six different types every day that just whatever was in fresh and you could take your pick. So just dip your little fish. I'm gonna use my fingers. Do as I say, not as I do. Don't use your fingers. Danger. And again, you don't wanna overload it. So just fry a couple pieces at a time. And these will be ready when the fish kind of starts to float and the breading is nice and brown and again, kind of waiting for that oil sizzle to subside. Okay, so the sizzling has subsided and they're nice and brown. Let's drain them a little bit there. And then these are so, so hot. I'm gonna let them cool for here just a minute while I do the second fry on these potatoes and it'll be fine. Like the, the fish will still be plenty hot by the time these potatoes are done. Just let them go for about a minute until they look Really nice and brown, and the oil again is up to about 365. And the potatoes are done! Super brown and crisp. So excited about this, you guys. Way more excited than I should be for health purposes. All right, and then while everything's still hot, we wanna sprinkle it with a little more salt. 
can also use the same batter, the fish batter, to do like fried mushrooms or zucchini slices. We've even done eggplant chunks. It's all delightful. All right. Now, usually these are served with malt vinegar, but my skanky old grocery store doesn't carry it. So I've got some tartar sauce that I made up with some homemade aioli, and I'll put the recipe and a link to that, and then the aioli will be up next Thursday, or this coming Thursday, or whatever, sometime in the future. And I am gonna do a little bit of a lemon squeeze, though. Dude, it's so crispy, oh my god. Can you hear that? That crunch? Oh my god, I'm so excited. Mm. Oh my God, so crunchy and so moist and just perfectly cooked. Wow, this is better than any fish and chips that you will ever buy in a restaurant or a bar or a pub or anywhere, I promise you. So I hope you try this recipe. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll respond as soon as I can. And remember, if you ever take any pictures of any of the food that you make from my recipes, you can always put them on Instagram, hashtag Hyla Cooking, and it'll go straight to the website. Or you can post them on Facebook or the new Google Plus community for Hyla Cooking. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day and have some fish and chips, dudes, because it's good for you. Not really.